look at three of Revit's uh, more dirt-oriented offerings, um, kind of dirt, dual sport, adventure layering, you know, the, this uh, market segment that has been around for forever, but in the last couple of years have really focused down on. And for 2020, late 2023 into 2024 season-wise, um, they've kind of refreshed color-wise a couple of their offerings and changed their waterproof one up just a tad bit. And so I wanted to kind of walk through these because I think they're all very interesting offerings uh, in their price point. Uh, maybe a little expensive as usual, but uh, they're giving you some neat stuff that you're not seeing from uh, almost anybody else in this segment. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, easiest first. Okay, so easiest maybe not the right word, but uh, lightest weight, I guess you could say. Um, so this is the Sierra jersey. Uh, they had it already, um, you know, in a couple colorways, a black and a uh, kind of mid-tone red. Um, and then they, for 2024, they've brought out what they call aubergine, which is, I don't know, it's like a, it's a maroon, basically. Um, when you think of aubergine, you think of uh, eggplant, uh, which is more purple. This is not purple. This is a really nice kind of uh, muted red. Um, so what is this really? It is a, in many ways, an ultralight mesh jacket. And the reason I say that is because while the mesh on the front and rear, this kind of uh, higher sheen fabric, is a jersey style mesh, right? So it's that kind of really lightweight, high breathability mesh, not, not like a uh, you know, motorcycle mesh jacket uh, so much. Um, everything else, all of this stuff on the sides, and on the outer part of the sleeves, you know, your, your contact areas, um, is there PowerShell rip, rip stop stretch? Um, so it's it's quite stretchy, as you can see. Um, it's about a it's it's about like a 500D rip uh, rip stop stretch nylon. Um, so it's it's pretty comparable to a lot of lightweight mesh jackets. So while this is a jersey uh, to be thrown over separate body armor. Um, and you know, you've got these nice little elasticated cuffs and thumb loops to keep it in place. Uh, it, it's really blending that in between of a mesh jacket and a uh, true lightweight jersey to try to give you the best of both worlds. Um, it even has reflective, so the logo here on the front and then this big panel on the back, you might be able to see it a little bit in the light here and then strips down the outside. They're all reflective. Uh, like I said, the mesh material itself is a, a very, fairly lightweight, um, minimally stretchy. It's, it's a pretty uh, static material, I guess you could say, as opposed to stretch material. Um, but what they've done is run their stretch paneling up the uh, inside of the shoulders here, so you get some stretch there for when you kind of come around um, in a more aggressive riding stance. And you have plenty on the sides and then obviously all on the outside uh, of the arms, like I said. And so this is giving you a combination of additional breathability. Uh, this is a air permeable material. It's going to flex around separate armor that you're wearing. This is meant to wear over something like a uh, Revit Nucleus um, or you know, whatever other hard or soft shell compression suit or what have you you wanna wear. Um, it has very limited storage. You have one pocket here. Uh, which is perforated, so it's trying not to block any of your airflow. And then you have a little goggle wipe hiding inside. Uh, but, you know, just enough space to store a goggle wipe or... I mean, I guess you could throw a phone in there if you wanted to get really dusty. Um, so, yeah, this is like the, their ultralight um, version. Size-wise, uh, ultralight mesh adventure jacket. Uh, Size-wise, I will say that I found this to run very large. Um, and... What I mean by that is this is a medium and uh, I'll show some photos here of me kind of wearing it over a nucleus, uh, nucleon, nucleus, proteus, proteus, sorry. They've got a newer one coming out and I got my name is mixed up over a proteus uh, armored shirt. And you can see how this fits perfectly on me with no uh, difficulty with mobility. Um, I did try a large in there, I think it's the Trailblazer, which is the same thing, but with some cool print going on. Um, and it was enormous, uh, especially long. It was incredibly long and baggy on me. So I, in my opinion, I'd say that this runs true to size with space to layer over a armored shirt. And so, yeah, that's the Sierra. Like I said, no new changes this year with the color, but uh, I thought you know, I would step through it with my 
personal interest in the way things are made. Oh, one more little interesting note. Actually, I'll just flip it inside out really quick. So they've actually run an inner fabric up the sleeves. This is very similar to the mesh, like a, a thick mesh liner like you'd see in a normal motorcycle sh uh, jacket that you have, you know, running the whole interior. And so what this is doing also is um, not only allowing for some like slip if you crash, uh, it's a bit of a slip liner, which is a safety feature, but it's also obviously an additional wear patch on the inside. So if you have, you know, an exposed armor or other stuff rubbing, uh, this has space to move and not wear through your outer fabric from the inside. So, you know, good for longevity. And yeah, that's the Sierra. Okay, next up is the Territory. Um, this is more of a true mesh jacket, with the exception of the fact that it's using that same ultralight jersey-like mesh uh, here on the uh, front, the inner arms, and the back. Um, but your impact areas have gone from a stretch uh, ripstop nylon to now a full 750D ripstop Cordura nylon. Um, so it's uh, you know kind of next step up in I wouldn't say necessarily pavement abrasion resistance for like, you know, crashing a whole lot, but if you do on your dual sport ride or adventure ride wind up crashing on pavement, um, this should at least help your skin hold up better. Um, and it's probably still gonna be disposable, but as far as like, you know, off-road crashes, this should also survive really well with a bunch of low speed gravel offs uh, because it's, it's a solid fabric. So it's a non-stretchy. Um, the one downside about stretch fabrics in your impact zones is they tend to like kind of catch and snag and, and, and pull more um, and, and, and uh, rip or hold easier. Whereas a um, uh, solid fabric uh, doesn't have that kind of ability to be pulled apart. Okay. The other thing this is adding over the Sierra is now you have a full frontal zip, turning this again into a more traditional style uh, jacket. Um, but you know, you're still, you don't have a back protector pocket you do now have armor pockets at the uh, shoulders and elbows. So if you were wearing, you know, like a roost protector or something, you can throw that over for your front and back um, and then still have limb armor with this. Um, and the, the, to me, what this reminds me of a lot is if you've been around in, um, you know, buying motorcycle gear for a while, uh, you might remember the older Climb Dakar Pro uh, jersey. That was a, a true jersey in that it was, you know, it didn't have a zip, it was very lightweight mesh front back, very stretchy, but the outside of the arms all the way down were an 840D Cordura as well, uh, very heavy duty. So this this rem this feels like a, a updated version of that, but with a zip. Um, you do have solid panels up here with some perforation or punctuation, whatever you want to call this. Um, Depending on the bike you're wearing, this may cause some issues because if I throw this on, what you'll see is that uh, if you're seated on a bike, um, depend again, if, like if you're wearing this for more adventure or, uh, and you know an adventure dual sport riding, I guess more on a larger adventure bike with like a fairing and a windscreen. Um, at least like on, on my bike, a lot of the wind comes to kind of here up. And so you might see a lot of that airflow blocked if you're sitting. Obviously standing, you're gonna get a crap ton of airflow. You've got mesh all through the sides. The solid side panels will not only help with abrasion resistance if you, you know, come off the bike and hit on the side, you're not gonna tear through all of your mesh but it's actually gonna help with the air to go around your body because as it comes here, it kind of catches and almost bounces off or is channeled by the solid panels of fabric to go around and get, you know, that always hard to get uh, back area. Um, you can see how this large fits me. It's actually really similar, um, a little bit looser, but very similar to the Sierra Jersey. So again, to me, I feel like the Jersey runs a bit big. This is a little more as expected for a Revit product. Um, so for me, uh, you know, 42 inch chest, 180 pounds, a large in the territory is absolutely correct. And I have space to get this over a Proteus jacket or similar still. You do have a little more storage on this. That's kind of the other thing you're getting over the Sierra. Uh, so it's a little bit full here, a little bit uh, less airflow, but you do have now um, a pair of hand warmer pockets. You have a 
uh, internal little uh, storage pocket here behind the mesh. So again, anything you put in there is gonna get really dusty. Uh, the collar is nicely treated with a very soft touch um, fleecy thing. And then you do at the back also have a nice storage pouch. You could throw something like their uh, um, little poncho, I forget the exact name of their product, but you know, a lightweight wind or water uh, blocker in there. And then you have that exact same setup of reflectives uh, here and at the back of the arms. And then to give you a little bit of flexibility, you still have some of that PowerShell stretch here. Um, you can see it's, it's not super stretchy. Uh, so you are relying more on just the shape and cut of the uh, jacket to give you mobility. Um, but if you buy appropriately and don't expect to layer a ton underneath, uh, which you probably shouldn't, you should be layering over top with a windproof, um, you should be just fine. I, I think this is a really good option for like that next step forward if you're worried more about um, crashing a lot or especially uh, doing, you know, safety on a transit between uh, dirt roads, this is a great step forward to throw over your uh, separate impact setup. So yeah, that's the Territory Jacket. The only thing that's changed over the previous year, um, they didn't update the model, was they went to, they added black to the previous like olive green and grayish green options. Um, but it's it's a great option. And uh, again, that sizing, um, expect that one to fit a little more traditional Revit, a little bit sm maybe smaller than expected for a, a large from the US perspective. All right, so last but certainly not least, and the only one of their products in this line uh, that got a, a like version update for this year. Uh, the Component 2 and the uh, Blackwater for the Poncho Anorak version 2. And really the only difference besides new colors, um, some really funky ones available for the Blackwater, a weird like uh, high-vis orange camo mix, um, and then that same aubergine for the Component uh, Zippa. Um, the only thing that they've changed over the previous run is Kind of a big one really if you want to use this as a casual shell because they added okay they added a back protector pocket so you can now throw in and like i said the territory you don't have this so it's a you know a little bit less able to be run as a separate jacket with this you now have the space to toss in one of theirs or d3o or you know just about any back protector really uh, that's not too oversized um, I did notice this back protector pocket is not cut particularly um, deep, maybe, is that the right word? We'll go with that. So you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble wedging this in here, but it gets in. Uh, maybe it doesn't fasten, there we go. Yeah, a little bit hard to fasten, um, so that does add some bulk, but you can do it. Something like D3O would be you know, a non-issue getting in there because it's smaller. Uh, and wouldn't stretch it out as much. So now you have more options to run this as a standalone. Um, it's using the same armor as the territory stock, so it's a level one um, C smart. Uh, very flexible, very breathable, um, decent coverage. Uh, I was able to throw something like a D3O uh, LP1 pad in the pockets as well, so if you wanted to upgrade something a little more protective, these don't test particularly well. They're, they're pretty high in the level one range. Um, and by high, I mean like high transmitted force, not, not ultra protective. Um, but hey, you know, it's, it's nice to have it. You can run this as a urban shell, as a, a dual sport armor shell if you wanted with just a little bit of backup. Um, uh, or you can, you know, swap it out for something more protective or ideally you'd be running this over separate armor. Uh, Revit would prefer that because then you're buying more stuff for them anyway. So, uh, just a quick walkthrough on the features of this. Uh, there's lots of great videos out on this jacket, so I don't have a ton to add. Um, I've seen a number of people talk about this being pretty decent. Uh, it, you know, it is a laminated waterproof shell uh, using their house branded membrane. Um, they have not published any stats on the water column or breathability. Um, breathability wise, I run this out on a couple days uh, where it was in the 50s Fahrenheit, 40s Fahrenheit starting and topping out in the mid 60s. Um, all zipped up in the morning, I was fine. It does a great job blocking wind. Uh, when it's sort of getting warmer, 
um, especially when I was sitting. Uh, so like my hand guards and my fairing, again, blocking some of that airflow, I was getting pretty warm wearing this just over my armored base layer. So uh, I think, um, you know, depending on your bike, maybe on a true dual sport with like no wind protection, you're gonna get a lot more of the airflow through. Uh, and speaking of airflow, really quick on venting. So uh, one really nice thing they've done is most, um, most issues you run into with water uh, coming through waterproof jackets are through your zippers. Um, you know, leaving them open or closed, it, it is the number one infiltration point. And the nice thing is Revit did a very thoughtful job designing the flaps to come over top. So when these are closed, they're sealed down. You're not gonna get a ton of water running through. Um, and they're actually like facing downward on top of that. So the chance of inadvertent infiltration, very low, uh, well designed. These front, um, these forearm scoop vents are uh, excellent. I, I, the only downside, I say downside, the only kind of issue is that they don't, always open very well, so you're not getting a ton of airflow. Like if they had something that would kind of pop them open, um, at like a little stiffener piece of fabric or something, then they would be scooping a ton of air. Um, as it stands, you, you do get a decent bit, depending again on your hand guards. Um, it's a pretty simple jacket overall. Uh, the main chassis is a very similar ripstop nylon. Um, it is, I believe, uh, it is slightly different. It's slightly lighter weight. I have to check <laughs> than, than the PowerShell here. Um, but, you know, it, it's again nice to have it be ripstop everywhere because now if you get a snag, you're not going to ruin your whole jacket. You can probably get a patch and patch it up and, and you'll be fine. You've got that similar ripstop Cordura uh, laminated here running over top all the way down the arms for extra abrasion resistance if you come off on a cold, muddy dirt ride. Um, kind of the, the one weak point here, per se, on the waterproofing beyond simply, uh, again, the laminate, I don't know how good it is being uh, overcome by water pressure, is you have an exposed zipper. And we've seen other products like uh, Moscow's Basilisk, Basilisk and some others have issues where um, an exposed YKK water resistant zipper like this, eventually, if you're riding, riding in heavy enough rain at high enough speeds, the water will drive through there you have a, a pretty decent um, uh, gutter, rain gutter running down here to help the water channel out. Um, but this is kind of maybe, uh, depending on how you're sitting, this could be a weak point. Um, and then you have these uh, downward uh, zipping combination pocket vents. They're mesh backed, you can use them as a pocket, but they're also gonna open up and bring airflow in and around. That's really nice. Um, they used high quality seam taping throughout. If you compare this to some of their cheaper liners, you'll notice this is a much higher quality fit and finish on par with their Gore-Tex shells. Uh, so that's really well done. And then flipping it around, uh, you have a collar snug down, which is nice uh, on a colder day. You can bring that in around your neck. It's very well finished with a nice soft neoprene-like material. Uh, that same soft fleece is on the territory. You've got a pair of exhaust vents. And the nice thing is, again, this is fairly thoughtful. All of the venting is away from where you might be wearing like a Kriga or similar hydration pack or bladder. So this is out of the way of a backpack. You have a storage pouch here on the outside. Um, if you need to tuck more things away, you have the ability to snug the hem down. And on the inside, beyond the armor pockets, you also have two uh, interior pockets to stash things out of the rain, which is also super helpful because this is a little more of a dual purpose, commuting, urban, uh, clean styled, or adventure, dual sport uh, shell. So this one I think is very flexible in almost a literal manner. It does have a moderate amount of stretch on the shell um, and fits perfectly. This large uh, fits very similar to the territory with just a little more space. They did design it so that it will go over a similar size Proteus or uh, you know, equivalent uh, armored shirt with still space for some lightweight layers. Um, so I, I like this shell a lot. Uh, it has more reflectives. You see them coming down here. Uh, you see the same ones kind of on the arms. So this is, 
it, you know, despite being kind of a drab color, I, I think it's a very um, well-designed uh, part of this modern waterproof adventure dual sport layering system. Uh, they have made it more flexible with the addition of the back armor, which a lot of people asked for on the first iteration. Uh, so now, yeah, it's just, it's a decent shell. Um, you know, don't expect it to be the most abrasion resistant thing on earth. Um, but for what it's intended for, I think it meets its mark very well. Uh, it's one of the nicest design from a venting perspective. Um, and surprisingly for Revit, this one's actually pretty competitively priced these days. Um, so that, that is quite nice. And yeah, that's the uh, component too. And Revit's kind of updated dirt line from a upper body perspective. Um, they've got a couple uh, changes to their pants, but I haven't had a chance to test any of those out. And if I do, I'll make a video. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below as usual. I'm happy to answer. Um, hopefully I covered these in detail and in a way that will help you make a decision if you're interested.